We all remembered the first Pokemon we caught, right? Mine was a Clefairy. At first I disliked the Clefairy, but soon I began to bond with it. We became great partners, me and her. We traveled all across the Kanto region, together. We found new Pokemon, battled some gyms, and enjoyed each other's company that we spent. We were inseparable. When times got tough, we relied on the trust in each other to see us through. After many years as a trainer, I began to work as a Pokemon professor. My main field of study was evolution, how it worked, and why it worked in the way it did. I always used to bring Clefairy into the lab with me, and she would watch as I did my experiments. As time went by, Clefairy began to become more and more involved in my experiments. For instance, she would hand me the chemicals or the tools I required when I requested them. One day, I decided I would do a little test involving her. I wanted to see what would happen if I gave her two stones at once. So I put her inside a small containment area and gave her both a dusk stone and a moonstone to hold. As expected, the moonstone vanished and she shone a bright light as she underwent an amazing process of Pokemon evolution. After she had finished evolving into Clefable, nothing out of the ordinary happened. My heart sank. This experiment was doomed to failure. It would be embarrassing. As I previously exclaimed to the other professors that I thought I was onto something when I was talking about dual stone evolution. If this turned out as a failure, I'd be a laughing stock of the faculty. It wasn't until the fifth day that I noticed something was different. A variation was Clefable's shadow. It was lacking wings and instead had large spikes protruding from the body. A few more days went by and I noticed that the shadow was getting darker. There was no changing in the lighting of the room. It was on the twelfth day of the experiment that it all came tumbling down. I returned to the lab after getting coffee that I discovered Clefable asleep on the floor of the containment area. I went to my desk, put down the coffee, and got out my notes. I turned back to take another look at the shadow and dropped my notes in pure terror. The shadow was rising from the floor. My jaw dropped in utter horror as it ceased in two-dimensional and it became a monster. Its once black exterior became a dark purple. A horrifying smile began to form on its face, equipped with two rows of deadly sharp teeth. Two bright eyes began to form, an evil gleam in them as they locked onto me, making me freeze. Once this astounding yet horrifying metamorphosis was complete, the creature walked towards my dear Clefable and leaned towards its ear. The following event. I can only describe as the shadow eating her dreams and putting nightmares in their place. I ran up to the glass and pounded on it, tears in my eyes at the sight of my precious Pokemon writhing in terror at the hands of what I can only describe as a shadow. I ran to the alarm and pressed it. The faculty was instantly locked down. It stood up straight and its smile widened as it wiped its mouth mockingly. My Clefable stopped moving, and I couldn't hold back a sob. After satisfying itself on my poor Pokemon's dreams, it rose up into the air and disappeared through the walls behind it. A few minutes later, other scientists and a member of the police rushed in. By this time, I had my darling Clefable in my arms, and I was stroking her head gently. I knew this event couldn't get out. I'd lose my job, and... Worst of all, I'd lose Clefable if they found out what happened. An officer named Jenny looked around the room before focusing her attention on me. What happened here? Why did you press the alarm? I plastered a fake, impish smile on my face. Nobody must know. Oh! Nothing, officer. I was just startled by a shadow.